Hi there, guys. Um, I wanted to follow up with um, how my project with the VFD drive was coming along. So this is a, uh, just to go back and clarify, this is a single phase uh, 120 volt input and 120 volt output single phase uh, VFD. It actually puts out three phase on the output. <clears throat> this is a low speed bench grinder. So it is a split pole um, continuous capacitor type bench grinder. So there, there's no centrifugal clutch to take out. So the start or the run capacitor or starting capacitor is always in the circuit. So there's always two phases in use um, with these motors. And um, prior to, like everyone was always seeing, we were seeing pictures of where people were using a VFD to control a three-phase motor. And in actual fact, this bench grinder, because it doesn't have that centrifugal clutch like a, a fan motor in a furnace does, where it removes the start capacitor and the running capacitor is just in there. Now, the thing that I want to identify is that I'm using low speed. I think it's really imperative if you want to go this route that the low speed, it's only 1,750 RPM. And the reason that that's important is with the lower RPM, the windings in here are a thicker diameter, so they uh, they will take more current and to produce that. And also with the lower speed, it's going to produce more torque um, throughout the speed range. So it's it's better protection of having the variability and gives us the two phases. So the the coils in here can handle a more demanding task than a high speed 3600 RPM bench grinder. So if you wanna go this route, make sure that you're looking at the low speed unit and my other video that talks about the actual VFD, it's a 110 phase input, uh, single phase and 110 volt output three phase. And I'm using all three phases. So in the wiring up here, I just have uh, my normal line voltage coming in and I have three lines coming out here running to the motors. I've taken the capacitor out in the bottom. So I'm running the windings directly from the VFD. There's nothing else in between that. In this configuration here, um, what I've turned around and done is still maintain my front switch. It is my on off power. So it powers up my light. It powers up my VFD. Once my VFD comes on, um, I have my controls. Now, right now it's saying that my setting is at uh, a reference of 57 hertz so i can change the frequency in order to vary the speed if i go one more it'll say what's my feet uh what's my target um uh, uh speed in hertz and i can see what my amperage is and my voltage and then this was was because I've got it programmed up for this, I can actually reference back to an actual RPM. Now with the VFD um, doing this route, I wanted the two. I wanted a two-inch um, grinding capability. I have my one by forty twos, gives me that smaller surface. If I'm doing a little bit more aggressive grinding, um, maybe a little bit heavier stock removal. I wanted the two inch and the, this became the, the nice size platforms. As you can see, the size of it is nice and small. It's compact. It gives me a two inch capacity in width and it's the ability that I can do quick changes. So with these guys here, it's, it is a fairly easy quick change. It locks down. The belt can turn around and come off. And it's it's relatively easy to put it back on. Now the guard on the multi-tool is uh, fairly tight. So it, it does keep a fairly small edge in there for getting your belt in and out. And it's got that locking mechanism on the top. Just unlock that and now it's good to go. Now the multi-tool itself, it does have different configurations. This is a two by 36, you can get a two by 48, you can get two by with a lar large platen wheel. 
Um, you can, I've got the plate here that I could turn around and decide if I want to put the seven inch uh, disc sanding plate on there for a side. And, uh, but at this point in time, I really just wanted the two inch, uh, two inch grinding belt for that capacity. The tracking is just as simple as left and right on the front here. And my tool guard that I have is I've made a, a guide because, you know, what angle is this? How do I reference, you know, where am I at? I have a couple of these where it's 15 degrees. This is fixed. This is fixed. So I measured the angles out and I printed off a, a, a surface here that I can now say this is 15 degrees to the belt travel. One of the things that I wanted to identify is that I made a couple of these. I've got 15 degrees, I've got 20 degrees, and a lot of people just do not realize just how shallow the difference is between the 15 and 20 degrees. So now if you look at that, that the front one is 15, the back one is 20. So there's not a huge amount of reference difference. And like I said, I can easily throw my 20 on there. And then once I've got my 15, I can just say, there's my 15, double that, there's my 30. And with my, four, with my 20, I can say, there's my 20, double that, there's my 40. So these two become very useful for me. Uh, coming back to the use of it, uh, the speed and everything like that is, is all controlled by the VFD. Um, so I have run and stop. The other part that I should identify to my other side of this, I'm using the same configuration inspired by a cliff with the cardboard wheel for buffing purposes. This is actually only 10 layers of regular cardboard paper. I just took my Amazon boxes, uh, took my grinding wheel that was off the side, cut the cardboard the same size as that and then I use Carpenter's um, 3000 PSI glue for gluing up. I put glue on both sides of the cardboard, stack them up and put some weight on it and then put that overnight. And once I put that on here, a lot of people will turn around and say, well, that's going to create a lot of imbalance. Uh, it's not true, that type of stuff. Well, the thing is with the VFD, I don't have to run it very fast. You know, what I turned around and did is, let's say I get down to, I'll get it running here, you know, and I can go you know, 500 RPM. And what I ended up doing is I used a very coarse rasp. You want something very, very coarse because it is going to be, when you stack them up and, and put them on, there's no way you're going to get the center. Even if you drill the center, you're going to have sort of an oblong loop. So what I turned around and did is took my rasp, put it down here, and I trued it up going back and forth, taking off um, cardboard until I had a full circle. And I could run it as it came truer and truer. I could run it up to speed, getting it even that much truer. And now you can see that my max speed I, that I programmed into it is 3,000 RPM. I do not have any excess of vibration or... Um, oblong because that wheel is true. The other thing too about that wheel is there's not a lot of mass to it. So with, with very little mass, there's very little weight to turn around and create that imbalance while it's running. Now, I've just shown you that I've got full control of the VFD, full control of the speed. Now I can take this all the way down to easily as, uh, as low as... Um, you know, there's 200, 200 RPM, and, you know, if I do enough, yes, I've still got torque at low RPM, and that's because of the low-speed motor. So that low-speed motor is what really provides me the, that ability to run the system at a, at a slow RPM, and if I turn around and let's see what we've got here, um, that's running at 10 Hertz versus the normal 60 Hertz. 
and it's drawing uh, one amp of current through the coils. The, the uh, motor is rated at three amps. So I'm even this, at this low RPM, I'm still not over currenting the, the windings in the, uh, in the motor. So that's the beauty of having the VFD with the frequency is that you basically should never ever exceed the winding capabilities to produce these low speeds. You can see that if I bring this up, I'm running right about two amps now. And that's 1100 RPM. So if I want 900 RPM, you know, that's a beautiful speed for You can see that the speed never really dropped. If I want to jump it up, I want to be something a little bit more coarser. Well, I can get it up to, say, 1,700 or 2,000. We can see we're still running 2.3 amps. And for that 1700 RPM, it should be right around 60 hertz. So I'm running 71 hertz right now for, for getting that, that speed of that range. So right up to 3000 RPM, the 100 hertz, I can do grinding still, or I can do buffing. And it polishes that right up. Now with the VFD, even if I map that high speed, another beautiful part about this is that it, it does use active braking, so it slows it down and it will stay active until just about when it stops, when it stops flashing, that's when it removes the, the active braking. So I don't have the thing spinning off uh, for a very long, prolonged time period. And the nice part about this is that I can turn around and preset so I can see what my my speed is that I want. You know, even before I start up, I can say, okay, I want 1,000 RPM, hit start, and it's there. It stays at wherever I last used the, the dial. <clears throat> Makes it very nice and true. The, uh, the other thing that I did with this is I wanted a... Uh, I, I guess my filings are dust capture, so I put this hood up on top. It's just one inch by four inch uh, aluminum angle, so it comes back over the over the back. And I have a magnet underneath here, and a magnet in the back here, catching all of my filings, thereby reducing my amount of dust. And I don't have any real dust at all collecting um, around the unit. Keeps that. So then, I, when I want to turn around and do some cleaning. I can stop it and I can pull the magnets off or I could just come up and vacuum right around the magnets. If I have a, another uh, larger capacity, I will think about maybe building a vacuum uh, hose clamp right up in here that I could just bring my hose up right here and capture more of the dust if I took the magnets off and do it that way. So I've got a lot of, lot of capacity in this. Um, what did I do to build this? Well, this is just some um, eighth inch, uh, is it eighth inch? No, I think it's about 330 seconds um, aluminum plate that, was, uh, that I just had laying around. I bent it up into a shape so that my VFD is back here. It's far enough back that 
as I'm working in here, it's not in my, my working plane. Um, but I have everything uh, readily available, all my controls are readily available. This uh, VFD unit uh, does have a remote display, so I can pop this display out. I could have considered putting that on the back side, um, but then I still have to figure out how and where I want that to mount. So that was just easy enough to mount it this way. Um, mounting it this way is the preferred way because there are heat sinks in the back here. You want the airflow coming up through the heat sinks. There is an active fan pulling air up through the top, keeping that unit cool. And you can see that even after using that period of time, the fan hasn't been running at all um, for, that, for that period of time. As the more you use it, the more the heat sinks will heat up to try to dissipate the energy that is being used to produce, produce the variable frequencies and the current. Uh, shutting the unit down, turns that off, turns my light off. Uh, the VFD does have enough capacitance in there that it'll stay powered up for a period of time. Um, it makes it just identifies just how efficient the VFD is that it still stays powered up for, for quite a bit of time afterwards and that the capacitance in there does help uh, sufficiently power the um, IBGT transistors that are used to control the, and produce the variable frequency three-phase output. So I, I hope that's uh, helpful. I hope that's insightful. Like I said, it uh, gives me a, a two by 36 inch platen um, in conjunction with my one by 42 veils. And from here I can turn around and do um, a single operation where I could be doing sanding. I can do multiple belt changes and it gives me the buffing capability. Uh, this wheel being brand new, I still have to work some more compound into this, but I do like the, the fact of how it feels. I'm starting to get the, the inner cells loaded up. It's got a nice waxy feel because of the, the amount of compound that I have in there. And, uh, and it's that soft texture. So I hope that helps guys. Um, just a little bit more insight. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I hope this uh, may be insightful or give anyone else some more insight as to possible uh, bench grinder modification configuration um, for producing your sharpening equipment. Thanks again. Bye for now.